to this video. Today we want to look at the trapezoidal rule for numerical integration. The trapezoidal rule for numerical integration. Now, first of all, numerical integration is a method of integration whereby the integrand is given by a set of values in tabular form. Now, to look at the trapezoidal rule for numerical integration, let's look at this uh, question. In the course of solving the question, all the concepts you need to know to really understand the topic will be given to you. Now, let's look at the question. Use the trapezoidal rule to find an approximate value of this integral, this definite integral, with five ordinates. Use the trapezoidal rule to find an approximate value of this integral with five ordinates. Now, so let's look at it. This is the question. So, solution. Solution. Now, first of all, the essence of using uh, some of these rules, the trapezoidal rule and other rules, to find an approximate, to find approximate uh, values of different integrals is that there are some integrals which are very difficult to, 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 to come out with. There are some integrals which are very difficult to evaluate. So, we use numerical methods to get approximate values for those uh, integrals. And one of the methods we normally use is the trapezoidal rule. Today we want to look at it. So this is a question. Now, we have been given this integral to differentiate, by, by to integrate, to, to evaluate. That is to find an approximate value for it. And you are seeing that with five ordinates. Now this is how it is done. Now the integral is this. Integral from zero to four, square root of s cubed plus 3x dx. They are saying with five ordinates. Now the ordinates is the, the y values. So let me say, the person says five ordinates, it means that there are five y values. Now, so with five ordinates. Five ordinates. Now, before I continue, let me tell you this. At times you can say, with five ordinates can also be, be, be put as four intervals. Four intervals. Six ordinates will be the same as five intervals. Seven ordinates will be the same as six intervals. So at times, we, instead of ordinates, we just say intervals. But the number of intervals plus one will be equal to the number of ordinates. You have to take note of this. So with five ordinates. Now, to do this, to calculate what you call h. And this h is called b minus a all over n. And the h is the width of the stress. The width of the stress. When you say stress, you are looking at the, the s values. So the, 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 the constant difference between the s values, that is the h. Now, a is the lower limit of integration. The lower limit of integration. So in this case, A will be zero. And B is the upper limit of integration. And uh, in this case, B will be four. N is the number of ordinates. Number of ordinates minus one. Number of ordinates minus one. Uh, number of ordinates minus 1. So in this case, we have 5 ordinates. So n will be 5 minus 1. So this implies that, in this case, because a is the lower limit of integration, in this case, a will be equal to 0. b will be equal to 4. n is the number of ordinates. We have 5 ordinates. Minus 1. And this is equal to 4. Now, if they say 4 intervals, Straight away, n will be equal to 4. That's why I told you that when they say intervals, straight away it is 4. It's going to be 4. So the number of intervals plus 1 will give you the number of ordinates. On the other hand, the number of ordinates minus 1 will give you the number of intervals. This is only with intervals, straight away, n will be whatever interval they are giving to you. If it's ordinates, you have to subtract 1 from it before you can get uh, the, the value for n. Let me write this 5 word. Okay. So here it is. 
So with this, you can calculate h, which is the weight of the stress. That is the constant difference between the x values. So the h is b minus a over n. And this is equal to 4 minus 0 over 4. And this is 1. Now what this means is that you should be able to come out with a table, you should be able to construct a table, and this h will help us. So this is the function we are, we are going to int integrate. So we are going to have a table like this, x, and this is the function, uh, square root of x cubed plus 3x. So we have a table like this. Now, what this means is that, what this means is that we are starting with this uh, lower limit of integration, zero, when x is zero. And then this h is saying that from zero, if you add one to get to the next uh, x value, so you have added one to this to get one, then you add one, two, you add one, three, and you add and you get to four, and the four is the upper limit of integration. And so this h is it means that the, the constant range between the, the, the successive, successive values of s it should be one. So you see that the difference the, two, the differences are one. There add one to this, one to this, one to this, one to this, okay. Are you seeing it? So if h is 0 0.5, then it means that if this is zero, then this one is 0 0.5, then you go to one, 1, 1.5, and so on. So that's the essence of the, 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 the h. That's a constant. Uh, uh, that's the essence of, of the, the constant range between the successive values of s or the width of the space. Now, what is what we are going to do? To get the corresponding y values here, we put x. Wherever you see x here, you put zero for the first one. When you put zero here, you are going to get square root of zero square plus yes, zero cubed plus 3 times 0, so you are going to get square root of 0, and it will be 0. When you put 1 here, 1 cube is 1, and then 3 times 1 will be 3, so 4, square root of 4, and this is 2. When you put 2 here, you are going to get 2 raised to the power 3, which is 8, plus 3 times 2, which is 6, that is 14. Square root of 14 should give you 3.74, yes. Let me grab this one to two decimal places. And then, when you put 3, 3 cubed is 27. And then 3 times 3 is 9. 27 plus 9 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. So it's 6.00. And then when you put 4, 4 cubed is 64. And then 3 times 4 is 12. Everything will be 76. Square root of 76 should give you 8.72. So this is the table. Are you seeing it? This is the table. And you can see that from the table, you can see that you have five y values. And this corresponds to the five or this that we talked about. Are you seeing it? And uh, we have uh, five x values. Now look at the board. If they say, instead of five ordinates, you could have said four intervals. Now this is how you check the intervals. If you are here, and you just move one, two, three, four. So you see that when you have five objects, you are getting four intervals. From here, you move one, two, three, four. So that's why I said that if there is intervals, you don't do anything to it, that straight away, the end is equal, will be equal to the, the given uh, number of intervals. Yes, if it is oddness, the number of oddness minus one will give you uh, the, the end. Okay, and that end will be used to calculate the, the edge. Now, having obtained this, then we use this formula. If you are, if you are, if you are using the tra trajectory rule, this is the formula. So, therefore, using the formula, using the, uh, the formula, this formula, integral from A to B, F of X, this is the rule, this is the formula, this is equal to. The trajectory rule says that this should be 1 over 2h and then to brackets y0 plus yn plus 2 times y1 plus y2 plus and so on to yn minus 1. 
Now let me explain the, the formula. So when you are using the trapezoidal, the, the trapezoidal rule, this is the formula. So half h. The h has already been calculated. That is the, the rate of the stress. Now why not? For the table, why not should be this one? You are looking at the y values. So why not should be this? This is y not. And then this is y1, y2, y3. Now, this one should be y4, but because it is the last one, you, as far as this table is concerned, you call it yn. Yes. So, the formula says that half h, y0 plus yn. So, the first one plus the last one. So, normally you can say half h, alpha plus omega. You see the first one plus the last one. So, alpha plus omega plus two times the summation of the rest. So, alpha plus omega plus two times the summation of the rest. That's why we have n minus one. Why of y n minus one? Because if it's up to n, then it means uh, the last but one. So, n minus one. So, this is the formula. So, this is equal to half h is one. Now, from the table, when a person is given to you, nobody will write this for you. You have to, to look at the table and they say that it's y not y1, y2, y3, and always the last one should be yn. So from the table you can see that this one will be 0, 0.00 plus that's alpha plus omega 8.72 plus 2 times summation of the rest. You have look at these two. So times the summation of the rest. 2.00 plus 3.74 plus 6.00. You are, are correcting everything to two decimal places. So this is equal to, and this one, if you use your calculator to work with this one, you should get 102 times 32.2. The whole of this will give you 32.2. And this is equal to 16.10. Yes, that is correct to two decimal places. So, viewers, basically, this is how the, the transitional rule for numerical integration works. It is not difficult at all. You just have to know the formula and look at and know I have to calculate the h and all these things well. So, the rest will follow. It is not difficult at all. And I've told you that the number of ordinates minus one will give you n. But if the number of ordinates is, is rather a uh, number of uh, intervals straight away the end is the number of intervals that have been given thank you very much for your attention for more of this video subscribe to my youtube channel shamala junior